So um, thank you for being willing to be one of my victims for the <laughs> Connect webcast. <laughs> you know, I wish I knew, I know, I remember the first time I saw your work. And the first time it was in the magazine, which was very, very, very early on, you know, yes. when it's just an yeah. online magazine. Mm -hmm. um, I, it was the little, it was the, well, when we get over to your Padlet, we'll, uh, we can all see it, but it was a little black girl looking down. And um, that was uh, in the magazine. But yes. I guess I finally actually met you on our first cruise, I don't think I might, I probably didn't meet you before then until I asked you to teach on our cruise. And, you know, it's funny because um, you were so real. You were like just a person and I was just such a fangirl. And uh, yeah, and I'm still a fangirl. Uh, and you're still just Linda. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <sighs> it's never gone to your head but it has gone to mine I don't understand you I don't understand your talent I don't understand your eye I don't understand how you can create these absolutely breathtaking pieces one after another do you never have a failure oh yeah oh yeah I do mm-hmm uh, I, I, I've never destroyed any but one. I did tear one up once because it was just a failure. And I've got uh, up there, I've got a, quite a few I haven't finished because I'm not, eh, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I do. I have failures and I just move on. It's just that consistency is one of the most difficult things. And when you look at a person's body of work, it's so easy to, it's so common to have a you know sort of like fabulous works and almost work I mean that's pretty common and when I look at your body of work it's I mean it's nothing like that it's just it's top tier for every single piece I, I don't know how you live with yourself <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know how you walk through a door how are you not completely insanely um narcissistic I don't get it Linda Huh. Maybe I could analyze myself if I had more time, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. I, gonna, I just love what I do and do it. But you don't have any art training, right? Well, yes and no. Um, I am. Um, mm, I've from a child, you know. Of course, everybody says that. Um, kind of started as a child, but. Uh, coloring and whatnot uh and then when I was 13 or 14 my parents divorced and we moved back to Texarkana uh from Fort Worth and uh I had private oil painting lessons from a lady um for a summer or two I don't know how long she, she started me in watercolor then started me in uh in oil and then I didn't do much had some art in high school and uh, then I really wanted to do art. That's all I ever really wanted to do. And then I got married and had seven kids. And well, you know, <laughs> my seven kids were the priority. And so in 1984, my next door neighbor, who I did not know until she passed away, had never done art in her life. But she invited me to go to Texarkana with her to uh, take an oil painting class. So we went 1985. Uh, a community college opened up about 20 miles from here, and I went there and stayed out there for eight years, taking every art course I could take, and some more than once. And the teacher kept giving me scholarships, so I wound up, I mean, I actually graduated with an associate's degree, but um, I, she continued to give me scholarships, so I kept going back, taking classes. And um, how many hours? How many hours would you say you put in, in, in the studio in a week? Ah, I try to be in here every day for a minimum of five hours, but I don't always get to do that. Sometimes it's three days a week and sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five, but, but this is what I do. Now you got to understand, I live <laughs> in a town of a thousand people. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> I've lived here 42 years. <laughs> And I was discussing with one of my neighbors the other day, they just moved here from Fort Worth. Uh, hi, Blanca, she's signed up here. And uh, we were talking and I said, I don't know anybody in Omaha. You know, I, I've lived here 42 years. And, and I said, uh, she was talking about the judge who lived down the road. I said, really? And they've lived there longer than we have. And I said, really, the judge lives down the road? Really, I didn't know that. And um, and so, I mean, my husband's worked around here forever. He knows all kinds of people, but I still don't know anybody. I know, I know one lady for sure, <laughs> Andra. You really and honestly mean you know nobody. I, I know nobody because I live here. First, I raised seven kids. You don't have much of a life when you raise seven kids. <laughs> and they're all the same age nearly. But, uh, and then, and then, um, you know, I started uh, doing this and this is all I do and then for 18 years I drove to Plano to teach so everybody I knew was in Plano I feel the same way because I lived in federal way Washington for 36 years but I was in an office mm -hmm. madly trying to make a living and mm -hmm. didn't I never met anybody <laughs> and it's the same in my town now I, I know it's quite unusual. Oh, you know, I'm ashamed of myself. I do know some people. I teach a class. <laughs> I teach a class uh, in Mount Pleasant and I, and I do know my students. So I guess <laughs> I, I do know about eight people, but they don't live in Omaha. So <laughs> Lord, isn't that awful? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> but I live in here. <clears throat> I do. So I, I know. I understand. I'm going to share the screen. So, oh, no, that's going to take me one more second. We're going to share the screen so that, whoops. Um, okay, what am I trying to do here? Oh, technology. Okay, and now we will share. There we go. Okay, so I trust, Linda, that you are seeing your Padlet with your yes. work. Okay. Uh -huh. And of course, I said everything right here. Yes, you did. You certainly did. <laughs> I can't do anything halfway, Anne. Uh, <laughs> I did think of that. I thought, well, I, this is probably why Linda's work is incredible, because you don't do anything halfway. Uh, but I love that you started with the older stuff, you know, with the newer stuff at the bottom. Yeah, I, because, because I care about people, and I care about people not being confident in what they do and and they think their work's not good enough and i like to show where i started uh kind of not so good um i think myself well i mean you know there was nothing wrong with this person no trip, no but, but it's just next, i didn't have a clue what i was doing the next one which was just a few short months later is the astonishing thing right i mean that and this one down here yeah, that's the little that girl. was the one that was first, and that's when I first saw yeah. you, knew you, and you know all that. But listen, before we, um, oh wait, let me look. Uh, yeah, before we, so um, you, this was with this was um as a class exercise. So you had mm -hmm. the, and then you just a little few a little while later, you know, three what and a half months. What you three and a half months. Uh -huh. Three and a half months. So here's what I love. I'm bringing this up particularly because you say something here that I feel is so important. And what I've tried to tell some of my students, which is while you're drawing, pay attention to what you don't like, but pay more attention to what you do like in your drawing, right? And then just keep expounding on that. Exactly. And you get your own style. It's That's automatic. Right. Mm -hmm. I love, I don't think I've seen it pay, said so succinctly as you said it here. I love that. Anyway. Yeah, it was kind of astonishing to go from basic coloring to something like that in three and a half months. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it blows you. You know, you can see that this was, this was meant to be you and color pencil. Uh -huh. Although you and oil were also meant to be, so <laughs> you're so talented. A gorgeous piece. So this is the first one you said that you felt like um, you had to quit wasting time. Like this is what you're supposed to do. So let's get let's let's do it already. 
Right. Right. Uh, because we went to Italy in 2000, I was 53 and I still wasn't doing anything. I had a dream, had a real big dream and uh, I still wasn't doing anything. So I realized when we went to Italy, because when I was in Italy, I was taking all these pictures for my dream, but I didn't know how to do my dream. So, so I, I realized I had to do something now, right now. Wow. And this gorgeous piece came out of that. Yeah, it was several years later that I did this, oh. but uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. I love this, by the way. I mean, I really, really, I have actually done, my sister went to Italy and she asked me to do one of hers and it was kind of the same thing, stairs and cobblestones and windows and not nearly as nice as yours, Linda, not half as nice as yours. It's just beautiful. So then you decided uh, from that point on that you were going to work from your own photo. Well, the one of uh, Italy was my own photo too, but but this was when I I realized I have got to work from my own photos. I cannot work from other people's photos to learn. I like the Native American. See, that's another photo. That was the cover of a magazine. I think it was called, I don't know what it was called. But um, anyway, uh, that was not my photo, of course. And I realized I can't continue to do that. I have to work for my own stuff. So well, uh, yeah. can I just ask you, I mean, you're right, but what, what made you realize that just because that, because you couldn't publish this, you know, wherever you wanted to the, the, the Native American or what, what made you decide that? I'm not really quite sure. I had a, I had no direction. I had no mentors. I had no guides. I had no one to tell me what to do. Uh, but I guess I had had, because of the eight years I spent at the community college, maybe something in that made me realize I, if I was going to enter competitions, which I didn't know about entering competitions, that I, you know, you have to have your own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So um, I'm going to skip. I'm going to ask you about baby steps. So you have baby steps one, two, three through six A. Does that mean something? Yes, it's, it's progression. Uh, in I, I went from this step to that step um, and, and learning along the way. Um, what I guess I want people to understand is I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And um, it just the little steps were were quite important um, in something that I learned through each one. This one changed everything about how I work with color pencil. This one happened because of an accident. And this one, <laughs> I taught workshops all over the country for eight years because <laughs> of that accident. <laughs> Isn't that great? yeah yeah I had wax bloom in her hair you probably can't see my mouse but I had wax bloom in her hair and I didn't know what to do about it so I asked someone and they said we'll get a soft brush or a tissue and go over it and uh, I must have missed the part about the soft brush so I picked up an old oil painting brush and started brushing and accidentally brushed across her shirt and I went oh what did that do and I said I think I'll do that on all of it so there you have it and from that time on, I blend with a brush. You know, I think I've tried it, Linda, and um, maybe I brush too hard. Can you brush? It's too probably hard? the wrong brush. Um, uh, it, it takes a very special kind of brush. Not any brush will work. Okay. And it, the paper has to be about 80% saturated with color pencil before it will work. Okay. Otherwise, you have nothing to move around. Okay. Well, that all makes sense. You know, I'm, I, I've never forgotten that I failed your class on the work, on the cruise. <laughs> so Linda was teaching on our workshop cruise and, and I thought, Ooh, I want to do this. And she worked with this crazy paper, you know, Fisher, right? No, and you uh, are. I do work on sandpaper, but, back, but probably for that, it wasn't sandpaper. It you was are. the Hanson Metientes that I was working on in the workshop. No, no, no. It had the grain. They all have the grain. Um, well, anyway, that's how had, I learned to work on sandpaper because you were, I, supposed, to, you were supposed to go with it or yeah, you know, and, and I yeah. kind of go on a crop, whatever, and and you came because you, you do things uh, in a linear fashion and you can't do it on that paper. 
<laughs> you no, came was, over was, right before lunch, put your arm around me, you looked at the drawing and you're like, I don't think this is your thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the paper you work on, I can't stand it. So <laughs> yeah, I, I love my story that I failed Linda's class. We are what we are, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. It's not that I love that paper. I just can get good results on yeah, it. Yeah, so. yeah. So this is something really different. Um, you know, if I had not done that piece, I never could have done the plastic bag pieces. It's mm -hmm. ice. And and it. I, I spent 200 hours on this piece. I've never spent that much time on anything. And but I didn't know anything about um, lifting color pencil I didn't know anything about anything when I was doing this and um, I learned uh, just all the little shapes and whatnot I started on the wrong side of the paper and was you know quite a few hours into it before I realized I was on the wrong side of the paper and then I flipped it and started working on it yeah it took me forever to do that but I could not have done the plastic bags if I had not done that wow and that was such an amazing series tell me what you learned that was step baby step or what did you learn here? I don't know. What did I say? Oh, oh darks yeah. first. Yes. Uh, do the darks first because the pigment floats across the paper and it contaminates. And at the time I was doing this on her cheek, I had put the white on her cheek and it messed it up. It, it because that black pigment or any dark pigment floats mm -hmm. and it, it contaminates that and you can't clean it up. So you do that last. You clean your paper and you do that last. That's right. I agree with you there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful black there. Da baby step five. Oh, isn't she sweet? Uh, that happened to be an animal and I don't do animals. Uh, I think how many animals have I ever done? I've done one oil painting of a cat. Oh, wait a minute. I've done three cats. Um, but that's quite possibly the only, is that the only animal I've ever done in color pencil? Maybe. Oh. Portraits are more my wow. interest. Right. So, and then you said something about the grass. The grass was new. Yeah. Yeah. And the little toes. But yeah, I thought the cats turned out pretty good. Yeah, or the two-headed cat looks kind of like it. <laughs> uh, and then we have baby six, uh, six A and six B. French gray. Yeah. Now, what made you decide? Hey, I'm I'm not going to use color in this. I um um was teaching in Plano, and I have a palette guide of all the Prism Prism colors organized according to uh, value and color family. And I looked, I was flipping through my palette guide and I happened to look at the French grays and I, boy, those are really pretty. Mm -hmm. I need to do something with those. So I searched out this photo of my great aunt and um, this, oh, I, I can't point, but the upper, the picture in the upper is the original photo. Right. And then I made a black and white um, copy mm -hmm. of it okay. and did that on uh, Is Cancer Me Tinties and it is on the color sand not sand paper, but the colors. Right. And it just turned out so beautifully. And I learned not to use the 50%, the 20% and the 30%. You only use the 90, 70, uh, black and white and the 10% because it really? looks, yeah, it looks real pasty on that paper. The 50% is about the same value as the paper, but it's, oh. It just looks bad on it. So I never use the 50, the 20, I mean, 50, 30, or 20. But I use black, white, 10, 70. 10, 70, 90, and black and white. Uh -huh. Wow, interesting. And let the paper do the rest. Love See, The paper's love. the mid-tone value. Yeah, and this, so this was like the the 10, I guess. Do you say? You uh, uh, it's, you know, white. Oh, okay, white, right. White, right. and maybe some uh, 10%. Yeah. Right, right, right. And a little tiny bit of color in her eyes and the little grapes on her, uh, right there on the, um, the, well, not that, on, on the shirt, on the blouse. There's some little oh. grapes. Oh, yeah, a little bit. Tiny bit of color right there and in her eyes. And um, I did another picture of my mother with the French grays and did the very same thing, just a little bit, just a whisper of color. Yeah. And you don't get bored doing that? 
Why would I get bored? Well, because I'm always like, oh, I'm so excited when I get to do a new color. Oh, I get to use yellow. Uh, uh, well, you know, in doing the plastic bags, I have to do all the background first. And that can take days and days and days. I use as many as 30 blacks on one piece. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that gets kind of boring. And it's like, yippee, I get to use color. Right? <laughs> I love this piece so much. This is your mom. That's my mother. Yeah. yeah she she was 16. It. Just love that. Yeah. Oh, and then, I mean, so you, do you still do graphite work? Sure. Occasionally, I will go back and do something in graphite just to make sure I still understand value. I had a teacher when I was at the college. Um, her name was Ollie Tyson. And Ollie would, uh, she'd do this with her fingers. She'd do this and then she'd curl her lips. And she'd go, and don't use that tiny brush. Well, Linda likes tiny brushes. <laughs> And but Ollie one day uh, she said to me, Linda, go darker. That's all it took. Because wow. I, I, as much as I've taught, I have found out that people are really afraid to go dark. Mm -hmm. And you got to have some places that are dark. Dark. Yes. Right. Yeah. The light's not going to show if those places aren't dark around it. Yes, that's right. It's the, the light is so dependent on the dark. I mean, you right. Can't, you can't get light with that dark. All right, we've talked a fair amount about about these um, bags, so let's let's go. And this is the first one. That's the first one I did, and I really didn't get a good, good photo because I had film camera uh, at the time. But yeah, that's the first one I did, and I thought I was going to lose my mind. I uh, I threatened myself I'm going to start this over at least four times, but I just pushed on through, and uh, and then uh, I entered it in CPSA. And of course it didn't win an award, but there's awards and there's awards because the, the gallery owner loved it. And he kept going back and looking at it and he followed me around at the convention. It was really weird. And, um, and so um, he brought a friend of his who worked on the newspaper to his gallery and he just showed him five pieces. He didn't tell him which one, you know, which one. He just said, you know, these five pieces I really like. But when he wrote the article, he wrote the article about my piece. And I said, well, there's awards and then there's awards. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, after this, I thought, huh, a series. I need to yeah, this, series I'm on to something here. Yeah. yeah. So you, um, can I ask like, so for me, if I were going to do a piece that was so complicated like this, I would use my value viewer to isolate sections. Do you have uh, any trick like that to sort of isolate? No, no trick at all. Mm -mm. No, um, no, I just get in there and go to work. It's, um, um, I do kind of have a unique way of seeing and I try to teach my students. I can actually see through, I see through colors, you know, to where the, yes. where the background color is. And I do see through those colors to where I put that color on first and then the next color on. And uh, it's kind of hard to teach people that, but. I do. I know exactly what you mean. Like, I'll, I'll look at it. It's, it's a brown, but it's not a brown. It starts as a green, you know, that sort of thing. Right, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. I've never heard anybody else talk about and, it. And this happened because I bought the pears, laid them on my bar, and the window was, the light was coming through my kitchen window and streaming across the bar. And I looked at that and I went, oh my gosh. I ran and got my camera and I started taking pictures of it. And uh, yeah, because during the winter, the light comes through the kitchen really well. And um, so, yeah, it astonished me. Like how lucky that you bought pears that day. Yeah, really. What if you'd bought ba bananas instead? <laughs> I've got it, some of the bananas in plastic bags. Well, yeah, you don't put it. That's what I mean. You <laughs> bought the right fruit. Yeah. You, you, you guys must eat a lot of pears. No. Oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah that's another one and uh i don't even know what to say about it yeah yeah, yeah. just well, the, I mean, dark, the dark different backgrounds different. very tedious and very important to do first yeah and and so how many um like uh 
do you just do black? I, I'm kind of doubting it, but is it just a layer of black or? Uh, sometimes I, if, if I get it black and then if, if I don't want it to read as black, I'll put another color over it because color pencils are translucent, right. not transparent, but translucent. So you can actually change the color to a dark red or dark green, something like that. This piece, The story behind this is so amazing. You know, of course, I have seven children, and there are seven cherries in here. And um, but that's not it. When I first, my first thing I ever entered in a competition was the International Arts Magazine, and I wanted the International Arts Magazine Grand Prize Award. I wanted it. Oh boy, did I want it! <laughs> well, so I entered a piece. Of course, it didn't win the award, but I got a letter from them saying they were going to do a book. And would I contribute 101, I think it's 101 ways to do people and figures was the name of the book. And then uh, another year passed and another year passed and I entered this one. And uh, lo and behold, it won the International Arts Magazine's Grand Prize Award. And when I, there is a piece, the, the two cherries on the right do you see the two cherries on the right? Yes, those. Right above it on the plastic bag. Yes, that all that part right there where the curve, all that was the ugliest thing I had ever seen to me. I'd put it on the floor and I'd look at it and go, that is so horrible. So I went ahead and pushed through on the plastic bag. And before it was over with, that was my favorite part. Oh my God. <laughs> but, but Linda, where are the other two cherries? Right, hidden. They're hidden. Are they in the bag? Are they over here? They're right there. Yeah, you see the stem. Okay. Yeah, those are the other yeah. two cherries. Okay. They're hidden. Of course, that makes you wonder because it's called the Magnificent Seven. So you have to look and go, where are the seven cherries? And now, do you come up? Your titles are absolutely so. Well, oh, wait, before we get to that, uh, now your name. How do you sign your name? Linda Lucas Hardy. No, Linda L. Lucas Hardy. Now, I took the Linda off. But okay. L. Lucas Hardy or Linda Lucas Hardy is on that one, yeah. But I mean, is it scratched out or is no, it? No, I think I probably wrote that with a white pencil. Oh, okay, okay. It okay. is on sandpaper, so. Okay, I see. You can put even too light over dark. Um. So how do do you just all by yourself come up with these amazing titles? I do. Do you? I don't about always. While you're drawing? I don't always get really great titles, but sometimes I do. I write them down. I've got over 400 possible titles every time I hear something a little phrase or something in a in a movie I'm watching or something on tv and I, oh that'd make a great title I write it down see so wow. it may never fit anything but but every time I have a picture I don't have a title for I go through that list and I've got at least 400 possible titles I've never heard anybody say anything remotely like that. And then sometimes they just pop in my head. I knew that was going to be the Magnificent Seven before I uh -huh. even finished it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love your title. Um, now you say here, you learned a good lesson. If you use an acrylic spray to seal your piece and it runs, don't fix the run with your finger. But yeah. are we supposed to be able to see something here that is a goose? Well, actually, probably not. In the original piece, you might see it. It was in the upper right hand, other upper left hand corner uh, on the door frame there, and uh, my the, the it ran, and uh, I just kind of wiped it with my finger. I went, "Oops, uh, that didn't work." So why? I, what does it do? Uh, it uh, just looks funny. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. It's just this is beautiful. Love this. This one. was um, a door in Omaha. It was uh, across the street from what used to be the water department. And it was just this old door with this beautiful curtain hanging there. And I went and took pictures many years ago. Then they painted it purple. And now I don't think it's there anymore. But it's a beautiful view. Thank you. Oh my gosh, it's just, I mean, look at this. It's just amazing stuff. Uh, it's so beautiful. Anything, to, oh, best of show. Mm -hmm. CTSA. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that was explored this? Uh-huh. Why? 
I mean, what was, you know, what is there something here that was not graphite, graphite and color pencil? Uh, okay. The graphite, they can't, they, you can't use graphite in the CPSA convention. No, so but you can in, in, uh, in SIPI. In oh, this your... was, yeah, this was the, this should have been the SIPI award and uh, not the SIPI. I'm sorry. The XB award. Yeah. That's what it says. XB. Yeah. XB. I uh -huh. didn't know graphite was, um, I thought graphite allowed. was allowed. Yeah. For oh, it is for for explore this yeah but no that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about the main one the CPS oh yeah the main one no it's I not know that. Well, wait a minute maybe it is for underneath if you read the prospectus i think it can be underneath yeah. I, that's what i thought i mean you know otherwise well anyway um uh -huh. gorgeous gorgeous piece this you know with my japanese background just asking Isn't she a doll yeah. where did you find this little girl how did you get this picture? Well, the Mount Pleasant, Texas has a, a local, have a, has a fair every year at, um, in September. And uh, what they do is they ask the art society to sit with the fair to tell people, you know, don't touch the artwork. So uh, I was sitting there at a table and I'd take my camera with me and this little girl walked up and I had my camera on the table and I had my finger on it. I'm going click, click she just stood there i'm like okay i never entered it anywhere because i didn't have permission but uh -huh. from her parents but i had to do that piece isn't that sweet it's just i mean it's just, just a okay. little doll that little finger up there i was going to ask you about your photos since you do take your own and um and you do a lot of portraits and it's not always easy to get people no to be look comfortable and natural you know I mean that's kind of the hardest part you can take plenty of pictures of folks but like this I mean you told I, you did tell me when we met last week that this had not won an award which just blows my mind yeah mine me, too. this was an easy this is going to win every award you ever whatever show you put it in period mm -hmm. yeah no she never did and I think it's a stunning piece I agree with you now where did you find her Walmart. <laughs> I, I saw her on occasion in Walmart and thought she would make a good portrait. And uh, it took me several years, I guess, before I walked up to her and asked her. She was very gracious and invited me to her home, let me come take photos of her. And they sat on my computer for four years before I ever did a picture. And uh, when I finally did this one, um, I sent it to her in a text and she was in church. And she emailed me back. I mean, she texted me back. She says, who is this? And I said, you remember the day the lady came over and took pictures of you? She goes, oh, yeah, I've slept since then. You know, she had completely forgotten. Well, four years, I guess so. Right. And, um, you know, I took her a copy of the book, your book that it was published in and uh, signed it for her and gave it to her. And yeah. And you did her twice and still no, no reward on this one either? Uh, no, and it depends on what I entered it in. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I even entered this in anything. I sold it, so I don't. Uh, oh. Anyway. Now, where did you, do, do you have gallery representation? Mm -hmm. uh, Southwest Gallery in Dallas and um, uh, Main View Gallery in Scottsdale. Are they constantly on your back for more work or? No. Southwest Gallery is so big and and Bob is taking in work all the time from different artists and whatnot. No, they don't. They never have harassed me for it. I know Scottsdale wants more work. Some of these behind me that you see are probably going to Scottsdale. No, they're not probably. They are. Yeah, well, you work so much anyway. I mean, how many pieces do you do in a year, all, all told? You know what? I'd say 12. Wow, you may not, but see, I'm as slow with oil as I am with colored pencil, oh. and I don't care. I don't care how long it takes. And I don't understand the hurry. I don't understand why people want to hurry, hurry, hurry. Why? Why do you have to do a painting in five minutes? Why? Why can't you take, you know, five weeks if you want to? <laughs> I don't get it. I think that you can, and I actually think most, don't you think that Yeah, I mean, but, you know, I, it feels to me like the one, the people who just, who do color pencil really just plainly like hobby for fun, you know, 
Um, they might also like to bake and they might also like to sew and they, they, they have this much time that they're willing to give each, you know, uh -huh. well, they, a lot of people don't have a place to work either. I do. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, we converted our master bedroom into my studio and then it started, you know, going off into the other bedroom. <laughs> So you have a you have you're in my the art studio. stuff's everywhere. Oh yeah. Well, if yeah, it's the master bedroom. Yeah. Oh, you got the master. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? You just sleep in the other rooms. What's the point? Well, you have a, <laughs> a bigger room. room. <laughs> I, and you know what, Anne? It's shrinking. I have found that this room is shrinking. <laughs> I got so much stuff in it; it's shrinking. I don't doubt it. I I want to I don't I want to make sure we have time to talk about the negative because I'm not I mean not the negative the negative space because I'm not yeah. entirely sure I understood what you meant here. Isn't that cool though? They it look so good. Absolutely gorgeous. But I don't know what you mean. You said I wanted to remove a flower from the background. Oh, lower right hand corner. I yeah. had a flower there that I did not like. Oh. And it looked really bad. So I did everything but stand on my head to get it off of there. And finally got it to where I got it covered pretty good where you couldn't see it. Where it's green. Okay. But it was difficult. Yeah. Uh, so you just randomly just like, you just randomly made these shapes to cut out the back, to make the back to. to no, no, no. Let me, let me explain to you. Linda is not real literate with um programs to uh photo editing programs okay I, I, i'm not real literate there. Okay. and i use a an obsolete program called picasa you may okay. still be able to download it but uh they don't it was google and they did away with it a long time ago but uh, i still use it and what i did was i i put I took the photo and I made it, it, they have a place where you can make a line drawing of it. So I let it make the line drawing. And then I use the slider to bring back color into it. Well, what it does if not, not every photo will do it, but if it's something real dark, it messes with it. And so I'm going, oh, that's really neat. <laughs> so, so I like it. I think I'll play with that. This is awful, um, just so beautiful. This the 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 stems. Oh, Linda. It's just so beautiful. Thank you. So beautiful. So you did the same thing here. You used Picasso. I did the same. Oh, and I had so much fun doing that. Oh my gosh, I had so much fun doing that. And I did something on this one I don't ordinarily do either. Um, all the green around the stems, uh, you know, lower um, left hand side. I went over everything with a black pencil, put the green on first and then went over it. And I left all the texture from the sandpaper and you know, I didn't blend anything. Uh, some of it I blended like the, um, the leaves and stuff. I blended with the brush, mm -hmm. but a lot of it I didn't, I left it rough. Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was just so much fun doing that. And mm -hmm. the, the computer did that. I mean, the, pro, the program did right. that. So I remember you uh, very distinctly sending me this and, um, I thought, ooh, she's going to go on a whole new tangent. And um, oh, I'd love to. <laughs> I know. So what I'm wondering, I mean, yeah, because you say it's so much fun. So I'm wondering was, um, did it not, you know, meet with as much favor out there in the? Oh, it doesn't matter to me whether it does or not. Oh no, it does. If I want to do it, I'm just going to do it and heck with it. it it's um, uh, that one sold, of course. It, it did that well. is most beautiful piece and the title ah love the title it um i wanted i have a a little booklet hold on a second not trying to take up too much of your time but how do i get this on here there we go um it's backwards this little thing from canson that has all their different colors oh, okay. that they offer so i ran across a blue that i really wanted to do this in and they didn't make it anymore 
So my next door neighbor uh, just happened to have that color. No way. Yeah. So uh, so I got it and wow. did this. Yeah. Somebody asked, uh, do you use a hog bristle brush? Hog bristle. Uh, it probably originally what I used was a cheap craft brush made by low cornell and of course you know they did away with it they quit making it and um so uh yes I, but it, the the brush has to be stiff at the ferrule if that makes sense you cannot use a brush that the bristles just lay down if they lay down they don't move any pigment it has to be stiff right at the ferrule so i'm always playing with brushes trying to find a brush but um, uh, sometimes I use a watercolor scrubber. They're nylon or plastic or something, and they can damage the paper, but um, the brush cannot be any larger than say a half inch because it's too big to move the pigment around. You're smearing pigments all you're doing. So you can't, uh, you know, it's not like paint on a brush. If, if the pigment's not on the paper, there's nothing to smear around. Yeah. So it has to be 80 to 90% saturated. So um, um, oh shoot, I was going to ask you something about that. Uh, but we need to move on because we still have so much to look at. Oh no, I know what I was going to say. Listen, if you, I, I, I just don't know if when you get, um, when you, when you get the invitation, when you observe, you who've come to, to listen, I don't know if you get the Padlet um, address or not. So I just want you to make, since Linda has written so much and we're not gonna be able to talk about all of them. I just want you to make sure that you get this, um, this uh, URL, it's the padlet.com slash and 759 forward slash connect with Linda Hardy. If you want to write that down so you can come visit the Padlet, we'll keep this up for a long, long time. Um, if that's okay with you, Linda. Sure. Now, yeah, drafting I, stuff, I want people to read it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, me too. Um, so I did, I guess I don't remember that this was, these were on drafting film. Uh-huh. Yeah. Can you like that? Oh my God. Oh, just uh, be still my heart drafting film and i work on sandpaper and drafting film go figure <laughs> i know but yeah drafting film is just incredible i don't know how you get it so smooth well you don't blend it with a brush because that doesn't work it's uh it it's um it's a whole different process working on drafting film than working on paper or sandpaper, a whole different process. Is it, do you go quite light? Uh, you start out light. And yeah. it, the incredible thing is you can put a lot of pigment on it. But it, uh, in, of course, now I'm just using Prismacolor. I'm not using other brands, but you're building wax upon wax upon wax upon wax. And by the time you get all this built up, if you're not careful with another pencil, you can just pull that right off and it's almost right. impossible to fix because right. you have to do those layers. Right. But, um, yeah, you know, there were some things I did on this that I wished I hadn't done, but I wasn't going to try to remove it too difficult. Um, yeah, don't tell us because we love it. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. I just got some shadows darker than I wanted them. That's all. Oh, no, I love the shadows. Yeah, I. it's been a long time since I've had a fortune cookie in the plastic bag with the Chinese writing on it, even. Uh -huh. I mean, you've got some great uh, fortune cookies. You're fortunate. <laughs> this was one, one of a kind. Uh, actually, I've never seen another one like this. And the first one I did was on sandpaper. I think it was 2007 that I won the Sippy Award on it. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I only got a few photos of it, actually, and uh, never seen another one good like this one. But um, yeah, that's a great fortune cookie. And yeah, it's just perfect. Then we have Oh my God, would you look at this? Now we get into oil. Is this oil or acrylic? That's oil. Linda. 
I know. I mean, this just leaves you weak in the knees. Oh. I've, I've lost my ever loving mind, right? <laughs> I painted every so single rock. This is Cabo. You might have even taken yes, this. I did. I did. I, On the did. cruise. Uh huh. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> sure did. And the pelican, I added the pelican just to add a little something extra to it. Do you see the pelican? Nothing. right on on the head of the rocks oh, the oh there it is right yeah, there. The pelican there yeah wow i added that just for interest yes that was taken on the cruise one of the cruises now did you um now did this sell in the gallery or it uh it uh, so yes oh it was uh, a purchase award the show uh -huh, it was a purchase award uh-huh oh linda i mean you would just you must just be so proud is this a, it, now you don't do acrylic at all so these are all oil no, I don't right? do acrylic. Okay. oh my lord and this one i thought i was going to lose my mind on this one too doing wow. all those tiny little tiny little what do you call them the wood oh my gosh <laughs> you mean like I, I i i like difficult apparently you know the more difficult it is oh, the more i, I like to do it you had to do all but those this, horizontal lines Mm -hmm. this is an old store uh about seven miles from my house it's halfway between omaha and mount pleasant and it was just an old store that was there and they had it up for sale and i stopped one morning on my way to plano and took photos and a, a realtor bought this so um yeah how did, they tried you, to make do, how did what? you do all those lines so perfectly did you like use a well, ruler or a uh, sometimes i use a ruler and sometimes i'll put them in and then go back with uh gamsol and remove some of the paint it's it's adding and removing oh yeah that makes sense oh that, yeah. just, that does look just horrifically difficult to do it was what is your favorite oil oh wait before you say that i love this one so much oh my god that blue those blues and that yellow I love what you wrote about it. So do you? Yeah. Yeah. This, well, and that's the truth. That yeah. is the honest truth. And I, I went through every blue I had. You know, unlike a lot of oil painters, and I, I, I say a lot of oil painters, I don't know, but they'll have their 12 colors and that's all they use, or they use the primary colors and mix all the other colors, etc. I don't. I use oil paint like I do color pencil and I go through every color I have to find just the right color. And believe me, I have a lot of colors. Uh, you know, 120, I mean, 150 Prisma colors. Well, I hate to tell you how many paints I've got. But um, anyway, this one was very significant because I wanted a weed in a pot. I wanted a flower that did not belong there because that is the way I felt. I felt like, what am I doing here? Who am I to be? doing this and have all this I guess attention you know but by golly I'm gonna plant myself there and I did <laughs> weed or not doesn't belong by golly I'm gonna be there so that's exactly what I did put a weed in there and these just grow crazy wild all around the Texas oh they do oh yeah are they isn't it a black-eyed Susan uh no i don't think so uh um, these grow real tall about four or five six feet tall okay but there's a lot of those kind of flowers around and what's the title a place to call home oh uh -huh. yeah that's a great okay now do you have a favorite oil uh right now um the um i just added this today uh in my opinion uh the the cactus blossoms on the far far right that one right there oh my god that one um i just found out two days ago that it is one of the 100 runners up in southwest arts artistic excellence competition that's not actually the what i wanted but <laughs> yeah that one uh wow I thought, and, and, and let me explain something. Uh, the blossom, the big orange blossom, the big orange when they're on the right. Yeah, that one. I wanted that more of an apricot color. It did not come out the color I wanted it. <clears throat> and I think it's important to point that out because even though it didn't, 
meet my expectation. I love the piece. I think it turned out fantastic. So I just ignored the fact that it didn't uh, win the color I wanted it, but it still turned out really good. So, and it sold and it went, it went somewhere. I asked uh, the David in Scottsdale, Mainview Gallery, where it went. And he told me, I can't remember now, but it was a very wealthy, wealthy, wealthy neighborhood. I think, well, cool. Okay. So, yeah, that um, I wouldn't necessarily say that's my favorite piece now, but yeah, I love it. You wouldn't you know say what? that's your favorite piece now? Well, I've painted a few since then. Uh, <laughs> I've painted uh, a few uh, more uh, since, but. So you're like that? You're like your most recent is your most favorite, kind of? You know, you know, not necessarily, but a lot of more experiments, like the yellow tulips. Yeah. The tulips there, that's just an experiment to see if I could, that's a real dark blue, that's indigo blue, to see oh. if I could pull indigo blue into that yellow and actually make it work and make it soft. Um, indigo blue and yellow, you know. Right. Yeah. It's oil, and, right? And I did do it. Yeah, I did do it. I did accomplish what I was after. Yeah, I mean, totally. Uh, uh, what was I gonna, oh yeah, this, you say, um, you loved this painting. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Yeah. This one, um, the checkered one in the, yeah, I had no intention of doing that one and wound up doing it anyway. <laughs> but if you look at the one right next to it, to the left of it, that one, it looks like arm in arm, girls arm in arm, and it looks like a knee up there. on Oh, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like, and that's why I called it girls just want to have fun because uh -huh. that's what it looks like to me and I learned a lot about glazing I glaze that's why it takes me so long to do it but glazing is like layering and colored pencil so you put <laughs> your color down you put another color over you put another color over and you but I have to thin the paint way down so um um a lot of a lot of oil painters don't want glaze because it takes so long but I like it so and, are you uh, working on more than one piece at a time uh-huh yeah yeah, I can paint on something and it'll dry, be dry the next day. And then I go back and work on it again. And and I use a lot of indigo blue on that one for my, on, on the dark greens, I used indigo blue for my dark green. So yeah. how do you decide which, which medium you're going to use for a particular piece? Okay, some things just scream at me that they have to be done in color pencil. When I, the last cruise I was on, when we went to, um, in 2015, the two girls, the one with the multicolored hair and the blue hair, mm -hmm. um, both of those said, we have to be done in colored pencil. Both of them did. Wow. And mm -hmm. I just love this piece. I just I love, love it. She yeah. gives me a feeling of peace. I don't know why, but she does. And this one too. That girl, yeah. Now I had my camera with me. And they were setting up for the, um, um, oh, what's it called in Seattle? Uh, oldest uh, folk festival, the folk festival they were setting up for. And this girl was a long ways from me, but I had my camera lens for long photos and I took a bunch of pictures of her. Wow. She always looks to me like um, um, Kate Winslet. Well, and another thing too, her hair was not quite that colorful. I did yeah. touch it up, you know, make it more so. Yeah, this was on the cover of many of our things. I mean, right. you, you let us grace, yes, because that was that. I mean, these two are just killer, killer, killer. I remember her hair that. wasn't that blue either. She, uh, a lot of her hair had grown out, so it wasn't that blue, but I wanted it that blue, so. Yeah, well, very, 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 very nice. And we, she we, has that. We are at the end of our hour, our oh, hour. Okay, that uh, is cool. I know, it flies, <laughs> flies by. Talk, just miss, missing Kaylee down there. Kaylee. Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh. There she is. First one with multiple brands of pencil. Yes. And, and I saw her in Walmart. Wow. A double take, turned on my heel. I said, Linda, are you going to let this pass you by or are you going <laughs> to? 
and said, okay, I'm going. So I, I chased. I mean, it, it must take some nerve to. I don't oh, know. it does. It does. Yeah. Most of the time, I tell myself no. <laughs> but I don't regret a minute of her. So yeah. how did you, so they said yes and you went to their home again or? No, uh, her mother wasn't there. Um, her grand, her grandmother, her, her, yeah, her grandmother, her aunt and uh, her brother and her sister were there. And it was the brother and the sister that were outside because they went out the door and I followed them out. And so I talked to the brother and I gave him my information and ask him, uh, you know, to tell his mother because she was out of town. Well, anyway, I did get in touch with the mother and we met at a park uh, and because um, she didn't know who I was, you know. Right. And so we met at a park and I took photos of her, a bunch of photos. And uh, this one was when we were just about done and she just sat down and wow. was relaxed. Yeah, yep. Well, like I said, it's so hard to get the natural, right? You right. Just... Well, I told her right off. I didn't want the smiles and I didn't want, didn't want posing. So uh, after a while, she got real comfortable. Said, How about over here? Uh, you know, what about this? <laughs> How old is she? She's, uh, she's about eight, I think. Oh, just a little one. Yeah. Yeah. I called her little bluebird because they said when she was born, her eyes were blue. So oh. that's what her family called her. Yeah. And I have given her mother every copy that's been printed of her. Oh, a copy of, you know, the magazine. Right, right. So oh, that's wonderful. Oh, well, Linda, now that you have made us all feel like throwing away our pencil forever. <laughs> I look at some people's color pencil work and I think, oh man, I may as well forget it. <laughs> No, Linda. I have. I have seen some color since COVID. These people, the yeah. work they're doing is astonishing in color pencil. It is. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. And you are right there amongst them. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh and if anybody will I'll take a question if there's one, I'll take up to two questions if you want to throw something in in the chat or q a i'll watch both um otherwise we will say goodbye to linda and i've got her i, I asked her would you like to teach on another one of our workshop cruises i just haven't asked linda in a while because i figure you know she's like well if too busy for <laughs> that kind of thing and then she's no, like, I'm yeah. not too busy so, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, all right. Nope. Nobody's got a question. I think we must have covered everything. So, Linda, you take care. Oh, wait, wait. Never mind. There are some questions. Have you ever used a Clairefontaine pastel matte board? No. Don't even know what it is. Clairefontaine matte pastel matte board. And then um, can you share that Padlet link on the chat? Oh, that's a good idea. I will do that. And then happy almost birthday. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is my that yours, birthday. Linda? When is it? My birthday is Sunday. Oh, well, happy, happy birthday, a little early. And okay. which Anne has and Thomas asked, what CP artists do you admire? What color pencil artists do I admire? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, there are so many. Um, yeah, it's putting you I on. I couldn't spot. really pick one, I don't think. Um, I'm going to put, oh, uh, shoot. I'm going to try, I'm trying to put the, the, why can't I chat? Oh, I can. Sorry. I'm putting the URL in the chat. There we go. Um, you can't think of anybody? Well, I know you admire some. Oh, I do. Some more questions. Um, oh, yeah, Lynn says it's like sanded paper. That Claire Fontaine pastel mat is like, you know. Oh. Does she tell the when, photo? When you find something you like, you kind of stick with it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Does she just do, does she just tell photo models she will give them a print? Do they usually buy the art? You're, you're not trying to sell the art when you Absolutely not. Them. No. And I, and I, 
like to if it's published I, and I tell them I can't guarantee uh, it'd be published but uh, you know and then I like to give them the magazine so. yeah 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 that's what I figured but I do get a written permission oh you do I have written permission from Kaylee's mother yeah yeah that's good okay so I've shared the URL in the chat and I think we're at the end of our oh Thank you so very much for this talk. Your paintings are just gorgeous and you have the God-given talent most of us strive for. By the way, chat is off. I don't know what that means, but um, all right. Well, Linda, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It Can was I say one more thing. Oh, you know, sure. I don't want anybody to think it comes easy. I it it's difficult and I and I stress sometimes over stuff. So I want you to understand it's not, it doesn't just you know, fall off me. It's it's a lot of work. You know, I'm glad I you have said to pump that. myself up. I don't listen to negative talk. If I hear something in my head that's negative, it's go away. I don't listen to it. So I'm really I glad you said that because it does, you know, when you I mean it does seem like you just sit down and go, oh okay. and then gorgeousness comes out, you know. Yeah, I read the padlet, padlet. I've I, I yeah i have challenges boy do i ever <laughs> but i like complicated yeah you like you like difficult i do i like difficult <laughs> well thank you for sharing yourself and your art and all of that with us and oh there's probably a, there's a lot in q a now i think they're probably saying thank you you know but thank you ann oh <laughs> Yeah. for inviting me to do this it was fun all right and the yeah. dogs are quiet so I yeah know. the dogs are quiet <laughs> it's time for me to go in the kitchen long way past time for me to go in the kitchen <laughs> they let me know about 2 30. Yeah. wow you've been good yeah all right well thanks everybody for coming and yes thank you everybody see you online bye-bye bye, -bye. Right. bye.